Dear participants of the Equinet Conference, strengthening the effectiveness of European equal treatment legislation in Brussels. My name is Ulrike Lunacek. I am member of this parliament from Austria, from the Greens EFA group, and I'm also vice president of this parliament, and I'm the rapporteur for the Equality Directive. And unfortunately, I cannot be with you, but I'm glad that I can do this video message for you. Now, you've posed me a couple of questions, and I'll try to go through them via this video message. The first question was, what is missing for European equal treatment legislation to be comprehensive and effective? Now, Article 19 of the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union definitely says that the European Union has the competence for anti-discrimination. And that's important to say because there are still some, you know, some member states who, who, who challenge that. Now, we have one uh, directive that was already passed into EU law in 2000, that's the Employment Equality Directive. It has by now been implemented in all member states. And this makes sure that there is not supposed to be, there will be no discrimination on the basis of age, disability, religion or belief and sexual orientation in matters of employment and occupation. What is still missing is non-discrimination in access to goods and services, in social protection and in education. So recently in this European Parliament we have we have managed to get through the plenary uh, report and uh, a demand that says non-discrimination in the field of occupation and employment is only effective if discrimination is also comprehensively outlawed in all other fields. That was in an opinion by the Libe Committee on the Employment Equality Directive Implementation Report. Now, what do we have? Only 11 member states ensure full protection under their anti-discrimination legislation. 13 member states ensure only partial uh, protection uh, under their uh, anti-discrimination legislation. And there are four member states who have no protection at all in the areas covered by uh, the proposal and meaning in the access to goods and services. A comprehensive uh, anti-discrimination legislation would not only benefit um, member states themselves and citizens in those member states, but also citizens of all EU member states when they travel or when they work or reside in other countries. And let me give you an example of my, home, home country, of my own home country. About, uh, about a year and a half ago, in January of 2015, in one of the beautiful old Vienna cafes, a lesbian couple met there and as for welcoming each other, they kissed. The owner didn't like it and told them to leave. Now, they were courageous enough to organize protest against it, but it raised a certain issue. If you, for example, had, if they had been black, and had been thrown out of the cafe because of being black, they could go to the courts and sue. But because of being lesbian, because of their sexual orientation, and the same would apply if they were, if it was because of their age or because of their religion or their belief, they cannot go to the courts. So that is why we need comprehensive legislation for everybody. And of course, it can also happen to people who travel in other EU member states. Now, what can be done, and that was your second question, to remedy these issues. We have a proposal for a council directive and it's called on implementing the principle of equal treatment between persons irrespective of religion or belief, disability, age or sexual orientation. This directive would change uh, what I have uh, been describing before and it's on the table. It was proposed by the Commission already almost 10 years ago in 2008. It was voted by the European Parliament in 2009 and has been blocked in the Council ever since. Now, your third question, what can be the role of the European Parliament? The European Parliament is and has been a strong advocate for equality. And now we have to push the Commission and especially the Council in order to move ahead. As I said already, I am um, a rapporteur for uh, this Equality Directive and we already have three references to the Equal Treatment Directive in the Parliament in this year, in this 2016. And now your last question was, what can be the role of the equality bodies? Well, not all equality bodies in all member states are working on discrimination on the basis of all grounds, meaning religion or belief, age or disability, sexual orientation or gender identity. There's often a problem of competences attributed by different laws that already exist in member states. So what I really 
urge you and what we need is equality bodies that are strong advocates and stakeholders for equality legislation for everybody. Now, that, yeah, there was still one last question that you asked me. What is my broader vision for an equal Europe? Well, there, when I talk about discrimination, I usually try to turn it around because when you belong to a group that in part of your identity you are discriminated against, it also means that very often you live with fear. You live with fear about somebody like throwing you out of a cafe if you kiss your partner or that you are seen as to being too old, for example, for some job or not for the jobs because discrimination is covered in the area of employment. But for example, that you, because of your, um, because of your disability, are not allowed uh, to rent a flat uh, or because of your gender identity. So there are several issues where people have fear that they might be rejected. Now, fear is the worst advice or advisor that you can have in your life. Living with fear is something that inhibits you, that doesn't make you happy, that doesn't make you live all your potential. So that's one of the main reasons why I struggle for an equal Europe, equal for everybody, because living a life without fear, living a life uh, where the courage to be yourself is important, that is one of the essentials what this European Union should stand for and what this European Parliament stands for. So have good debates and uh, hope to see you soon again at some other place. Bye-bye.